Hello and welcome back to Supercoach Edge. Well, round three was a week that reminded us that there are three constants in life, death, taxes, and then any player will return fire with a 100-plus score the minute that you trade them out. And that happened in the case of popular trade-outs in Young and Nick Martin, scoring 132 and 136, respectively. Liam, they're just toying with us. Absolute ridiculousness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say, I feel like, oh, I'm going to talk about this a bit later, but I feel like there were ceiling scores from both of those players. Mm. Like, I feel like Young, I mean, Young maybe not, but I still feel like what we've seen from Young versus what we got on the weekend um, I feel like it's a ceiling score. And Martin particularly, I mean, he had 44 and only scored 136. So Almost break the record, didn't he, for uh, most touches? Yeah, I think it was Dons. most touches for Don's uh, equal because I think he yeah. had the same as – but I think he got one taken off him off memory. There was oh, one really? that he got, yeah, after the game, so it went down to 43 off memory um, potentially, or it was 45 and it went down to 44. Yeah. Um, because he definitely got one that was like out of bounds or something, but they was credited with a stat. I don't know. Anyway, champion data, who you knows? Yeah. Uh, but we also were reminded the other, the, the fourth mm. constant I want to say is yes. that Bevo will continue Bevoing us throughout the season, uh, doing himself yet again. He subbed Libba and parked Bond in the forward half for extended periods on the weekend. How many more seasons does he have left on his contract? And can we start a petition? I'm not even a Bulldog yeah. supporter. Can we just get him ousted, please? <laughs> he's, he's, play, he's causing havoc first. Football in general, the football fans, Western Bulldog fans, surely. But more than that, super coach players, he's absolutely doing us over. He's bending us over. That's not good enough. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying anything, but do, do coaches have to be drunk tested too? Is is Bevo going to be a laid out? <laughs> yeah, one week. Should we? Because, uh, are you saying we spike his drink or something? No, not even <laughs> that. But like, surely some of the decisions he makes, like, I have to question. I have to, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that calls into question his uh, his sound mind uh, from week oh. to week. It's but like, even are like, you sure? starting Daniel as the sub, like, yeah. Again, anyway. perplexing. But, but I'll just yeah, Google but... it quickly here as well. So Beveridge is contracted until the end of next year. So we have to put up with him another year unless we pray to the gods and we apologize to the Bulldog supporters. But please take one for the team. If the Bulldogs miss the finals, surely, surely. he gets given the ass. So just do us a favor, please. But before we do get stuck into it, uh, we're going to get straight into this episode. We are going to, of course, run through our socials and you can find us on YouTube uh, if you want to watch us, not just listen to us, simply search Supercoach Edge and don't forget to like and subscribe so that you are notified of when our content does drop from week to week. Uh, on Twitter, you'll find us at, at Supercoach underscore Edge, Damon at, at DamoJ88, myself at, at Liam Evans underscore 95, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, search Supercoach Edge, and you'll find us there. Very good. Well, uh, let's get into uh, our teams. And of course, we will briefly outline how we both scored uh, for the purposes of our head to head competition, of course, that we have week on week, but for a more comprehensive look at our respective sides with analysis into our strategies, discussing the trades we're making and reviewing our teams more in depth, check out the Team Talk videos and make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you get notified of when they drop, which mine is up at the moment and um, you can jump into that and give it a bit of a squeeze. But on to my score for round three. Uh, the score was pretty half decent one. Um mm. I must say uh, that this is probably the one early buy round that I was quietly dreading, just given that my two big mid primos in Tom at the Hulk Green and the running man Miller, they were both out. How's those for names? They're just superheroes. Um, they they were just on the bench, just kicking up their feet and the, you know, sipping pina coladas, all that sort of stuff. And um, as it turned out, it was actually a half decent week. So I ended up scoring a 1938. And uh, ended up uh, virtually cutting my ranking in half. Again, rising 4,787 spots to now sit ranked 4,881st overall. Very nice. So not too bad. Still within reach, within reach of the Iron Throne. So uh, we just need to keep it up. Uh, my trades in the end, they were Young to Wanganin Miller, uh, Tom Berry to Powell, and Sexton to Sharp. And yes, of course, it hurt trading out Young. Um, who bounced back like we discussed that he would, no doubt. Um, we just didn't think that it was gonna, he was going to do, do it so soon. Mm. Um, as for Martin, I opted to hold him in the hope that he would score 
half decently, at least close enough to his break even, given that he uh, was facing the Saints, who tr- traditionally leak points to opposition wingers slash rebounding defenders. And that sure did pay off, at least in that case there. And uh, of course, as we spoke of, Bevo, he bevoed me. Uh, I'd bond with a C, um, but yeah, I'm not surprised nowadays. I'm just kind of going into Western Bulldogs games, knowing that I'm going to be bevoed in some way, shape or form. So yeah, it is what it is, but didn't really hurt me too much considering uh, that other dweeb, little uh, Nicky Dacos, um, only scored a couple of extra points more than, than Bont anyway. So it's what it is. But Liam, how did you fare? Not well. Not well, simply. <laughs> Gonna, is, yeah. is that the uh, was, long explanation? Yeah. yeah, that's the long explanation. The short explanation is shit. <laughs> um, I scored. I scored seventeen twelve, <laughs> super low. Uh, so my ranking took a bit of a hit. I am yeah. down to seventy five thousand eight hundred eighty third overall. But we're gonna climb. We're gonna. There's climb. a reason there though. Positives. There's a reason. There is reason. There's multiple yes. reasons. Uh, this if you if this was your dreaded buy, I don't know what I want to call it for me. <laughs> <laughs> you had... were way worse off. I didn't even realize until you told me your score, and I was like, "What?" And then you went through and then, these plays, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, I didn't have an M one. No, I did. Yeah. I did have. I did have Marcus Bontebelli, but that was where it ended. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was missing Took Miller, Tom Green, Sam Flanders, and Will Powell for my defense as well. So all of them missing. So I Jesus. did know I was going to take a bit of a hit this week. Um, I'll be well placed in the other buys though, so uh, hopefully it's just a bit of a blip, and I don't obviously have to try and get in, find the cash for a Tom Green or a Took Miller as well, um, long term. So it was kind of or Sam Flanders even, yeah, um, all players that I knew I wanted from the start. Um, so I kind of knew I was going to take a hit this week. Just uh, hit me a bit harder with the likes of uh, to have a quick scan of my field. It, Billings it hits you with the uh, scoring the like shit. Right. Yeah, exactly. Not, not just Passing the one. Wilson just scoring twenty five. Anyway, oh jeez. Um, in terms of my trades, though, got rid of Har- uh, what's his name? Young. What's, what is his name? Yeah, forever young. Hayden. Hayden. That's it. Hayden call him young. Harry. Call, yeah, call him by the wrong Harry. name just to punish him. Harry Young. <laughs> out, of, out of my side. Yeah. Booted him out. Got GTFO. Mick Martin too. <laughs> GTFO Martin. Maybe you were the tonic. I think pretty yeah. sure this is this is like a bit of Every a um, year, deja vu. God, this happens. You know what? Uh, young, I was young. I had no qualms about trading. Yep. Martin, I kind of wanted to keep, but it was just a case of I didn't know how else I could get a Tom Powell, and I was a bit worried that holding Nick Martin was going to be an issue. Like yeah. I think so many people were jumping off him that holding him and him scoring like shit was going to hurt longer term. And then obviously my last trade was, um, is it Tom Berry to Jack Carroll? Um, so Young, of course, did bounce back. I think, as I said earlier, I think it's a bit of a ceiling game. So I'm less concerned with the trade out. If I mean, 130 is not a bad or whatever he scored, 130, whatever it was. Um, not a bad ceiling score, but I just don't think it'll be his average score. Like I, th- I don't think he's going to raise his average high enough to make it worthwhile, um, but knew he would bounce back. Uh, Martin, yeah, I do wish I could have stuck fat, but again, it took him 44 disposals for him to score 130. His disposal efficiency is still a concern for me. As mm. a Don's man, uh, just watching him and even the people in the crowd, like the Don's fans around me in the crowd, they're just like getting back on the wing. Why is he, why yeah. is he in the back line? Because he just looks uncomfortable. Like it's weird. He just, like there was this one kick um pulling my hair out he was in the it wasn't a kick out but he was in the goal square it was like a 15 meter kick across to McGrath he just didn't hit it it was this easy I could have hit that kick like yeah. a drop short it ended up it hit, uh, McGrath had to dive for it McGrath missed it um I think it was Caminiti picked it up and you know snapped and kicked a goal like it was just I don't know like it's like he it's almost like he needs to be in traffic to make good decisions and kick properly. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just weird. It's counterintuitive, it's, but anyway. It's, it's a kind of like, you know, uh, as I say, if some people, and I wasn't this sort of, sort of person, but, you know, leaving essays to the last minute when you're in uni, Needs the and pressure, that's when you perform, yeah. perform the best under pressure. Maybe yeah. it's kind of like that. Maybe he was that sort of person, you know, study-wise. Yeah, it, just, <laughs> it was just such a weird, like, it was like a lazy kick. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know. But that's the one that sticks out in my brain because I'm like, he's such a good 
user of the ball. Mm. Um, but anyway, so I do want him back on the wing. I mean, he can still take kickouts from from the wing. Just yeah, exactly you know, right. Just push up as soon as he kicks it. Yeah. Please listen to me, Brad Scott. Um, <laughs> um, just pleading. Yeah, please. But it was actually sorry. I'm just going to jump back onto your point about um, the Saints leaking points to you know opposition wingers and rebound defenders. It was an interesting point that I probably should have considered when I was making that trade. Um, and interesting as well. I think after the match, Ross, and this probably just goes to, you know, think about this in future for matchups. Ross and actually said, I think after the match, he wasn't worried about Nick Martin, um, mm-hmm. racking up the pill. Yeah. Um, didn't think that he was going to be, he didn't think that he was, you know, that was an issue for the side. So it could be something that Ross mm-hmm. Lyon does consider long-term, like, you know, something mm-hmm. that we need to consider with Saints players. If you do yeah. have a, you know, a sheasel or, yeah, like a Nick Dacos or a... like a Dacos potentially if he goes back. Those sorts of players potentially could be good VC options or C options. Yeah. Um, when they do face the Saints. Um, so just something to consider. Yeah. Um, so though the trades this week did leave me with over 250k in the bank. So I am ready for some spending this week, and I will be most certainly burning a hole in my pocket. Do you want, do you want a bit of this action? Just spreading the yeah, uh, spreading much. the cash. I'm looking forward to having a full full complement of players back. Uh, yeah, it's much needed, of course. Uh, and I didn't even yes. realise as well that this uh, coming round was uh, a full round um, and not a, a nearly um, buy round because oh, it's, it's gather, gather round. round and of course. Everyone has to gather round after being forced to take buys and being forced to play a round zero. Thanks a lot, AFL. Anyway, uh, let us jump into our head-to-head. Um, now, Liam, uh, as it turned mm. out, uh, I chalked up another win, and the differential now is 436 between us. Um, but as I always say, Liam, there is uh, just there's another coming week. Coming back next week. Yep. There's a, a new horizon. Uh, the sun will rise again, um, and there's another chance of you potentially getting a, getting a win. Yes, it will happen. It will. Don't worry. But Liam, let's jump straight into our first segment, the old traditional, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, for the good to kick us off, it is that man, the bearded one, Max Gorn. Now, as we debated, Liam, should bring this up again, because we forgot to last week, in last week's episode, we debated... Over the full name of Max Gorn. Now, I can't recall the third one. I think there was three. We had, of course... Maxi. Maxi, okay. So we had uh, Maximilian. So that's obviously a a villain name uh, that we came up with. So apologies to anyone tuning in that does have the extended name of Maximilian. Uh, So we dubbed that name for Maxi when he scores badly. Then we had Maxwell, as in like Maxwell Smart, didn't we? Yep. So that was kind of like middle tier, not too bad. And then... It was Maxi, wasn't it? Maxi when he scored well. When he scores well, like Lachlan Maxwell, um, who just smashes them um, around the park and over the uh, over the boundary. So, must say that with that score of one seventy seven, it was well and truly Maxi Gorn that showed up in round three and made the most of a matchup against Ivan Solo, of course, almost tripling his break even. So, will be making plenty of cash for those that started him, and should also make mention, Liam. That in mm. our gags about the name Maximilian, I said that uh, jokingly that it sounded like a name that would be given to a Bond villain. Well, via Twitter, one of our listeners in at knee Tiki alerted us to the fact that Christopher Walken actually played a Bond villain in A View to Kill with the exact name of Maximilian Zorin. So what are the chances of that? That's incredible. Like, do we have the power to like to say something and then just bring it to reality, like bring it to fruition? I feel like the fact that the movie <laughs> isn't <laughs> wasn't filmed after we came up with that doesn't mean that we can bring it into power. <laughs> oh, well, retrospectively, but I, I honestly had no idea. Like, I'm a I'm a Bond fan, but I haven't seen any of the old ones. Nor did I actually know that Christopher Walken actually played a villain. Like, I know he's he's got that voice and whatever, but like, I don't know. I just don't see him as being. A Bond villain, really? let alone oh, having okay, a Maximilian. Bond villain. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, say, I feel like he's got villain vibes. He hit it. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. 
Five long years he wore this watch up his ass. Now, little man, I give the watch to you. <laughs> just, yeah, he actually does have a look about him, yeah. <laughs> um, but Ugh. is there something that we should test it out with, Liam? Should we, should we say that a player is going to score X amount, to our benefit, of course, and see if it becomes a reality? This kind of links in with our super coach edge patented crystal ball, of course. But the crystal ball is different, though. The crystal ball we yeah. have to gave it to you, and it, it shows yeah. us the future. Um, yeah. We we have, this would be like the power of suggestion for us. Oh yeah, very true. Yeah, exactly right. Well, um, who should we test it out on? Should we do it with Maxi again, or should we just choose a random player? No, I want Nick Dacos. Okay. Yep. And who's the most owned player in Super Coach? I want it to be that, that person. Would be- Harley Reid is the most owned. Oh, okay. Well, actually, this is a good one because <laughs> it probably works better. Yeah, he he needs to turn it on. I think I want him to turn up. Okay, he's going to score his first ton against Sydney okay. <laughs> away at uh, I don't know where <laughs> AH. I don't know where AH is. Oh, Adelaide Hills. I, I'm sure. I'm sure Harley Reid doesn't even know where Adelaide Hills is either. So he might even rock Ooh. up to the wrong place. But he'll still score a hundred, even if he does. <laughs> All right. I feel like I should change my answer. <laughs> you can't double dip now. Uh, all right. Yep. I want him to turn up. Harley Reid. Okay. Harley Reid uh, with a ton. I'm going to say, well, you originally said Nicky Dacos. So I'm going to say Nick Dacos to bounce back. Actually, this is a good one because plays Hawthorne and he's going to be tagged. Who knows? I'm going to say that Dacos scores quick number 82. Let's Ooh. let's see how close we get to it. That's bad. That's 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 not good for anyone. I know it's not good, but I'm just that's a prediction. Right, Maximilian, the real Bond villain. <laughs> yes, that's that's the big reveal, the big twist. I am Maximilian. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he's going to score that, but I'm hoping that he scores around about 112, 127, 180. I hope that he scores 200. Um... <laughs> that's not going to happen, even if you even if you are Maxi. That's not going to happen. No, he could do it. He could score 200. We'll wait and see how. what happens. Just take every kick out. <laughs> yeah. Play him in the ruck. Oh, yeah. And really annoy Kane Corns about taking kick-ins because they shouldn't be counted as stats. Uh, anyway, I, yeah. I have I do have thoughts on that. I do kind of agree with him, but at the same time, I don't. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to do an after hours episode uh, or something because we're going up tangent. <laughs> yes, let's move on yes. to the bad. Uh, Errol Goulden, my boy. Score to 73 is not what you want from a 614.1K midfielder. And we all know how capable he is of massive scores that are much, much higher than that 73. The benefit, though, is he is going to be mighty juicy for those that don't have him, Mm. uh, with him set to drop some cash, which would be good. Licking our lips with knives and forks at the ready because we're going to devour him. But uh, let's round it up with the ugly, and it is probably no surprise here, Jack Billings. And there was quite a few that could have been put in this category, but I think Jack Billings feels the most fitting. Scored mm. just a 42. Yes, it was a best 18 week, but this hurts, Liam. It bloody well hurts. We'll be primed for the picking as he approaches his buy in two weeks. And, of course, that increasing break even, uh, which mm. is around about 60 odd at the moment. So Jack Billings, uh, just not good enough. But now with round four on the horizon, let's look forward and jump into trade talk with The Price is Right. Show me the money. <laughs> the price is wrong, bitch. For those tuning in for the first time, The Price is Right is the segment where we discuss potential trades, trade targets from week to week, um, and even discuss whether a specific player under question should even be traded at all. So you got the hiccups. So let's kick off, Damon, with going, going, gone. First off, we're going to kick off with Tom Lynch. For those that started the Tigers full forward as a cash cow, it is a time to move him on as he suffered a hamstring tendon injury in his match against the Swans, which uh, you'd expect he'd be out for quite a while, uh, most likely requiring a surgery for that. So hopefully he's back as soon as possible. Yeah, he uh, could be out for the rest of the year. Who knows? But uh, the Tigs, mm. they're in a bad, bad way at the moment. There's Bolter as well, which he yeah. strained his not knee good... ligament of some description. Um, didn't look very good uh, out for a little while. And then Baker, I think, got cited for a one-week um, ban, which I think they might be contesting. Um, but, yeah, they're well and truly up the shitter, the Tigs. Uh, but going, going, gone. Also, we include Marty Hoare. He's set to miss the next three to four games with a fractured thumb. 
um, and the rookie defense, believe it or not, those stocks get even thinner. Uh, who have we had now? Caulfield. We had Gib Kiss, of course. Um, now Reed. Marty Poor. Reed. Um, who else is there? Is there someone else we're missing? I feel like there's someone else we're missing. Four of them. Yeah. But just utterly ridiculous. Um, again, super coach Reaper. He's just, he's just making his way through um, virtually the defense, just pillaging and taking blokes out. So not, not good at all, but uh, no. you can also use Marty Hoare as well as a bit of a loophole option until he returns. If you want to go down that route. So, yeah. you know, I guess he's not a complete going, going, going comes down to strategy and, and structure and whatnot, but yes. just thought we'd mention yeah. here. Probably one just to consider. Um, if you do want to move him on, but just a player that's not going to be playing um, for the next few weeks. Uh, another guy, we'll, we'll chat about going, going, gone. Probably mm. a more reason to trade him out. This is probably the, uh, what's the right word? Uh, the reason that you can punt him now. And it yeah. is Ollie Wines. Uh, hasn't been going too well. I don't actually know what his scoring is because he wasn't relevant. He's around about 90 odd, but like I, I know people are being frustrated. I can see on Twitter in terms of the CBAs and he's spending like extended periods on the bench. So yeah, peeps aren't happy at all. Yeah, okay. So we scored 99, 94, and 96. Not not too bad. Pretty consistent. Mm, he's not gonna make money though. But he's not gonna make cash at playing one, cash cow. Break even to 77. But he's got a hamstring injury. Um yeah. A strain, they've listed him for one week, um, which, yeah, let's see. I'd be shocked if it was a one-week hamstring, but I'm not a doctor. Yeah. So, yeah. who knows? And, uh, yeah, if you were, you'd have to keep doctor-patient confidentiality as well. So maybe it's to do with that, Liam. Maybe it's to do <laughs> yeah. with... I actually am to... a doctor. <laughs> maybe it's to do with the... Specifically, Ollie Wines is a doctor. I apologize. Yeah. Maybe it's to do with the... Um... Just a, a bag containing white powder that has hamstring written on it. And oh, that's yes. that's his one week out that he's got. <laughs> Just a different definition of a hamstring. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's what happens now. Thank thank the AFL. Thank you, all those doctors for managing players and giving out fake injuries. I just don't understand why they didn't do like just managed. I don't know. But, yep, yeah, Ollie Wines, um, enjoy your week off, mate. Whatever you're doing. Um, just... I reckon yeah. there's going to be more. Sorry. You don't yeah, get a surely. hamstring strain and have one week off. Like he's, I mean, he's not that old. He's only 29. So it's not like he's, you know, 32, 33 where it's probably yeah. worse. But And he's got um, tree trunk legs as well. Like he's quads and hammies, massive. Uh, probably the width of my torso. So he's like, I mean, he surely he'd be back. It's like a hammy on a hammy. So surely he's got enough hammies to go around. He'll be right. <laughs> but yeah, and it'll be longer than a week, surely. I mean, Stan is probably like two... Three Two weeks, at least, I'd say, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I think people, as you said, just are looking for a reason to punt him, and it's the straw that broke the camel's back in this case here. People are just like, yep, all right, done. Was looking mm -hmm. for a reason to get rid of you, so is what it is. But uh, let's move on to on the chopping block, and first up we have James Jordan. He has a break-even of 44, and while the new Swan has made 69 point ding ding point two k already, That's a score so of 65 <laughs> put yeah. a bit of a stall in his cash generation. The role isn't as strong. I know it always pops up. The role oh, isn't know, as strong. I'm going to let you get through this. Hang on, get through this. <laughs> okay. yeah. The role isn't as strong as we would have hoped with him attending just two CBAs on the weekend. <laughs> You've lost it here. He accumulated 18 disposals and six marks at a disposal efficiency of 89%. I've got to cover up your face here on Zoom because <laughs> I can't concentrate. Uh, you could probably hold him this week considering he will face the Eagles, but will be one to consider moving on as he approaches his buy in round five. Hold him this week if you can or if you opt to, but if you're in need of a way to get potentially a Tom Powell in, or you could use James Jordan as your ticket to Flanders, um, it does make sense to use James Jordan as your best avenue to get there. Now, Liam, what did you have to say about this uh, glorious number? The numerology that we have here that's tied in ever so deeply into Super Coach Edge. What is it? The, the number 69, ding, ding. I just want, you know, at the start of The Simpsons when, like, they do the day since last accident, I want to yes. see how many episodes we can get through without there being a 69 in there. That's a good point, actually. And we right. should we should keep, keep note of this. And then if there's no 69s, we'll note it at the end of the episode. Yeah. And we'll keep because... a counter. Listeners can also do likewise. Viewers as well. Let us know, and and you can you can count along. But I don't think we're in the last at least half an episode. We're not even halfway I... through, and we've already hit no. a sixty-nine. Ding ding. And I, 
when I was doing the run chain, I'm pretty sure there was another couple. So of course, always is. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But anyway, day six James last sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, it's like uh who was it, Brett Kirk? And he's like, um, here at seven, we just love oh, the footy. Yeah. It's like here at Super Coach Edge, we just love to 69. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our new tagline for 2024 going forward. Oh. And people will tune in thinking that they're going to be consuming Getting something other very different. content. Yeah, yeah very exactly. different content. It's with the, oh. the pies, the feet pies. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Only fans. It'll really ramp up then. Exactly. <laughs> Um, James Jordan, let's get back onto him. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it just comes down to what your structure is this week. Um, definitely could trade him in, uh, break even a 44. It's kind of approaching his sort of what he's been scoring. Um, yeah. but equally you could hold him just until his buy, not this round, next yeah. round. Um, I think just assess what your situation is. Um, same thing will probably be said with this next guy, and it is Jack Billings, whose break even is 64. He has made us 62K so far this season, but with his break even rising up, courtesy of that score of 42, and also another tactical sub out, we have to question his job security and role in the Melbourne lineup. Having been sub in two of his four games, starting sub as in round zero, and then being subbed out in round three, we may have to move him on earlier than expected because it might put into question where his role is in the best 22 or 23. Uh, he only had the eight disposals at 63%, only had 73 metres gained um, and spent 58% time on ground. Does not bode well for his cash generation. So consider trading him in this week or potentially holding him until he's buy. You might just risk losing a little bit of cash there as he may struggle to reach his break, reach his break even and make much more cash from here. Without a spike score coming in. Yep. Now, both of those guys, just quickly for me, the, they are out um, mm. because uh, Jordan is my ticket to Flanders. Yeah. And yeah. Billings, I am trading down to Darcy. And I just figured like both of these guys have a buy coming up over the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And yeah, whether or not they go now, they'll go next week. It probably just comes down if you can squeeze out a bit more coin out of them or if they can sort of re- you know, restart their cash generation more so on the um in the case of Billings. Um, but yeah, yeah, I can see I the uh, arguments for and against. I think that's fair. I'm holding Jordan this week most likely. Billings though is Gonski. Go um, sixty sixty breaking to sixty four. It's too risky. Totally agree. Well, let's move on to get them in, and uh, let's start with uh, one in a host of players here that are juicy options, and it is the Green Machine himself, the Hulk, Tom Green, and his break-even is 81. So the GWS uh, young gun has had a stellar start to the season, ranked as the number one mid to the end of round two before before his buy, with scores of 132, 152, and 137. And it does mean he's already increased in price by 31.7K, yes, although he's still a worthy trading candidate if you can find the cash. Potentially, if you started potentially, a, say, a Jordan Dawson that you're just mm-hmm. absolutely frustrated with and looking for a reason to punt. Uh, has a favorable fixture in his next three weeks as well, which is also a bonus facing the Suns, the Saints, and Carlton, having scored 147, 119, and a 145 against all those sides the last time he met them. Now, that... Uh, he is, I guess, past his buy. Uh, that's all the more reason to get him as well because um, it means you're going to have him for the remainder of these early buy weeks. Um, and as you've written here, Liam, and rightfully so, looks like the new age Clary, uh, just the big bustling uh, mm. pink sweaty pig. Um, mm-hmm. But he's the green sweaty pig in this case. Uh, he's old Tom Green. So <laughs> um, he's like a mutant. He's a mutant pig. <laughs> <laughs> he's just fluorescent green. Pulling out like the sewers. Ninja- Imagining is like a ninja turtle. Ninja turtle, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's yep. got like the little little bandana, little eye patch yeah. around his head. <laughs> and it's orange as well. <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, yeah, get him in. Get him in. Yep. Um, I'm just having a look at the other guys we have on this list. Probably, oh, see, the risk here is he could go up quite a bit in cash. His break even's 81. He's currently averaging 140. Um, 
So oh, he's not going to he's not going to keep averaging that, obviously. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, his break in's at eighty five. Sorry, um, I'm eighty five. Um, sorry, eighty five. But still, he's yeah. going to extra four points. Who cares? Yeah. It could be an extra twenty points. I reckon he's going to smash the yeah. uh, smash out of the park. So I can. I mean, let's have a look at his projection on Supercoach Plus. So he is projected to go up another thirty four k this week. So he's going to be six eighty eight k. He's projected to be at seven hundred k when he faces the Saints in round five. Jesus, and, and could go as high as 727. 727k against the Blues. Um, the highest uh, price player, I think, uh, mm, considering English went down. Mm, so, yeah, incredible. Yeah, it would be huge, absolutely huge if you can get there. Um, so, yeah, one to consider getting in now if you can. But I don't know if he's going to drop that much in price over the season. Like, mm. But it's going to be hard again to get him in. You've got to find 653k. So yeah. I don't know. It potentially might have to bypass him, but if he can get him in, I'd be doing it. The next guy on the list is probably a little bit more achievable. Mm. Um, and I think still super, super value here. And it is mm. Took Miller with a break even of 72. He is, I reckon he's the value pick this season yep. in Super Coach overall. Um, the running man went into his buy as the fourth highest scoring mid to round two with scores of 116, 137, and 115. So you can still name him sub 600K, and that he is an absolute steal. I would have him as one of the most important trading options this week just because of his price and his ability to score. I think at 572K, he should be getting him in. Yeah, an absolute um, steal. And part of the reason why... Uh, I had to restructure my team in order to find a spot for him um, after seeing what he could produce in round zero. Um, all we need to see, and uh, you were the same, I imagine, Liam, was just that role that he claimed back um, that he's, I guess, served him so well over the over the years and yeah. has seen him finish as a top eight scoring midfielder um, in uh, consecutive seasons, I think it was. So he is someone to look at 100%. Next up, we have um, another Gold Coast player in it. That man, the stupid, sexy one. Bloody Ned. Ned Flanders. Is, is, is. But Sam Flanders, uh, break even of 73, has tummed up in each of the games he's played this season with scores of 124, 128, and a 102. And he's also gone up 34K to start the season. He's the fourth string midfielder for the Suns, averaging a 48% CBAs for the Suns behind Raul Anderson and Took Miller. But that really hasn't, um, I guess, stunted him in any way, shape, or form. Is averaging 29 disposals this season with 10.7 contested possessions and almost 400 metres gained per match. All super coach gold in terms of scoring. At this stage, we'll likely finish as either an F2 or F3 behind Heaney and potentially Jackson. So I think that aside, get him in. Um, he's going to be a top six uh, forward, uh, hands down. And I think uh, out of all the players that we have on offer, Outside of Green, uh, obviously, and uh, potentially a, a Tookie Miller, uh, I think Sam Flanders is probably the more short of uh, finishing uh, as the top averaging player uh, among his line, uh, which is obviously up forward. Yeah, I agree. I agree entirely. This is the week I think as well to get him in, priced at seventy, uh, priced at five twenty eight k. Just having a quick look at Supercoach Plus as well. Probably, yeah, okay. I mean, it's hard to look at. His projected scores mm. are a bit all over the place. But, yeah, you should still be able to get him for sub 600 for a while. But I think um, you're better off getting him in now before yep. he goes up in price if you can. Moving on, and we've got a backline player from the Ooh. Giants. It is Lockie Whitfield with a break-even of 70. Oh, so close. Mm. Uh, the old Lockie Neil, sorry, the old Lockie <laughs> Whitfield, is back and as tempting as ever. Start of the season with scores of 108, 118, and 124. He's averaging 518.8 meters gained and three bounces a game, which he is rated, and while he's also rated elite for pressure acts, score involvements, and score launches for his position. This is why he is scoring so well. <clears throat> Should also be noted, I think we need to temper expectations because he has done it against the Pies in round one, so I don't think... <sighs> The pies are a hard one to read, I think, especially in that round yeah. one game. I don't think they were terrible. Jekyll and Hyde, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then they he's done that against North and the Eagles. So those two, I feel, you can really always discount. 
So yeah, he has always been has. a strong scorer, though, when he's been able to play that unchecked role across the back line. The question is, given he has struggled to play out four seasons, when does he potentially break down? And is it worth getting to him in? So can we go back to the well again with Lockie Whitfield? He's on a lot of people's never again lists, I have to say. Yep, yep including me. He's burnt me way too many times. And I think the other reason is that, um, I mean, comparing him to Flanders that we spoke of, who's more of an assured um, option of, of finishing as a top six forward, I think Whitfield has a fair bit of competition uh, to, I guess, you know, wiggle his way into the top six scoring or averaging defenders. Yeah. Um, and it's not as assured, not as clear cut. So may finish as, you know, a top, you know, eight, nine, Seven may just finish outside the top six, um, but still might still score all right. That's the thing. Um, but like you said, we've been burnt so many times, all of us, uh, majority of us. And um, yeah, is his body going to hold up? We just just don't know. Just don't know. Uh, let's move on to the next category of consider. So uh, it's an interesting name, this one here, and it's someone I'm all too familiar with. It is the big H, Harry Mackay, uh, with a break even of 19. And a key forward is a consider option. Say it ain't so, Liam. Say it ain't so. Um, it's uncharted territory for us because we're not usually one to speak no. high praise of any key position forwards or key position defenders, unless, of course, they're a Tom Stewart um, but or Sicily. But Mackay could be one to consider at a price of 467.2K as a potential playing cash cow option. Has had scores of 130 against the Lions, a 112 against the Tigers, and a 137 against the Roos. He could be one to consider with his break-even of 19, especially this week. He'd have to find the cash, though, or look to maybe downgrade an underperforming Primo to get him in as he faces uh, coming up. Uh, this is pretty good. Frio with an undermanned defense, potentially playing um, on Draper. Uh, of course, the young Josh Draper uh, going into his what third game. And Adelaide with an undermanned defense as well, by and large. So there could be at least two big ceiling games to come of 60K plus if he can maintain an average of 100 across the next two games. So that would push him up to around about 520, 530 odd. Um, so could be a, a genuine switch across to, uh, you know, a, a Flanders, a Jackson, all those sort of um, guys. But it reminds me. It almost happens at least once a, once a year. Like we've had uh, Tex Walker, I think it was, that was last year, wasn't it? Where he went on a bit of a tear yeah. um, and uh, had a run of games where he just went up in price massively. And then prior Cameron. to that, um, there's Cameron as well. Uh, Tom yeah. Lynch as well did it. Tom Lynch. Uh, played Collingwood, who he always smashes, Hawthorne and uh, someone else. I can't recall who it was, but it was like a three-game stretch where he went up over 100K and people rode that cash rise as well as got those big scores out of him. So you could potentially look to use that strategy here with, with Harry, but um, I think the time to jump on him would have been on the weekend ahead of the mm. Ruse. Uh, it was kind of a gimme. Uh, the Ruse only had Toby Pink as their, <laughs> their tall defensive option uh, and was always going to have a day out. Um, so you can still get on him nonetheless, if you wanted to. Um, and yeah, there's a bit of a, um, a bit of a pod potentially. His ownership is, is 4%. 4%. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's still a nice pod if you wanted to go down that uh, that path. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think you're right. I think it was probably a week ago, ideally. But, I mean, so he's projected for against Frio 109, against Adelaide a 97, and then GWS a 117, and in that time would go up about 70K. Yep. I reckon he could do better than that, a bit more than 70K, um, 73, I think. I reckon he could do more than that. Potentially, definitely against Freo, considering their defensive issues. Adelaide, yeah, okay, 97, probably accurate. And then GWS is probably a bit more of a wild card, considering they're probably a bit more strong defensively. I don't know, it's hard. I think, yeah, I think if you could do it, if you could have done it last week, it would have been ideal. Yep. But I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Mm. There's cash to be made. Yeah, there is. And with the ex, if you've got no other issues, you haven't had to use many trades to this stage as part of the season. I think it's definitely a risk that's worth taking, trialing. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it if you want to go down that route. Um, yeah, do something different. Could pop off, have another massive game. Mm. And, um, yeah, could make more cash than what we're, we're talking about here. So could pay off. Exactly. Now moving on to the next guy. It is Tom Powell, um, the forward. He is 
as a break-even of minus six. If you passed on the North midfielder last round, he still remains a viable option at a price of 375K. As we mentioned to him last week, we won't go into too much detail, but with scores of 95, 129, and 92 in the last three weeks, he is absolutely flying and could be similar to the Will Brody of yesteryear. Mm-hmm. If he ends up being a keeper, you'll be flying, you'll be kicking yourself as well. So prioritize him as a trade in with another projected rise of 40K on the cards this week. I think he could quite easily sit as an F6, F7 potentially as well. So maybe yep. one, it could be a five as well. Like, I don't know, he could be a keeper. Um, but also it could just be one that you can hold as sort of the loop option down the line. But also he'll get mid eligibility as well. So we'll have that mm. switch that'll open up, which will be very, very handy. Yep, that's a fair point. And uh, just to sort of highlight how strange the forwards are at the moment, no surprise, Heaney and Jackson are the top averaging uh, players. And then it's Harry Mackay uh, with 126.3 in third spot. Sam Flanders, fourth, Jesse Hogan, fifth, and then Max King in sixth spot, and then Tom Powell in seventh, uh, followed by Dane Zorko and Tom Papley. So uh, it's absolutely all over the shop. And I think just naming all those guys, a majority of those players being um, key forwards, which, as we know, they can't really be relied upon um, by and large. I think it's fair to say that Tom Powell, at the moment, it's tracking as though he's going to be a top six forward. Um, and, yeah, getting bulk CBAs, all that sort of stuff. So... Yep, 100%. Love that selection. Get him in if you haven't got him. Uh, next up, we have uh, Ollie Dempsey um, the, as a forward, obviously. Uh, break even of negative 19. So has already increased to 71.4K to sit priced at 219.8K, but still has a juicy break even after scores of 96, a 59, and then uh, bookended mm. nicely with another 86. Has impressed not just with his consistent scoring, but also drifting up to the wing like he did against the uh, Hawks, which opens up his scoring potential even more. Um, it's something that I was kind of worried about early days and part of the yeah. reason why I went for Sharp over him. But having already got Sharp, I'm looking back and I'm like, well, I like what I'm seeing now with Dempsey. Like he's not that stay at home forward, um, you know, sort of roaming the, the forward 50 and not exiting it in any way, shape or form. He's actually pushing up the ground, working his way back and love what I see there. Um, so he's not that traditional forward. Um, and it may seem, I guess that maybe it's too late to get on Dempsey, but for context, he's virtually the same price or thereabouts as the starting price of both Sanders and McKercher. Mm. So not too bad when you view it in that respect there. And the main thing is really as well, what you're buying, what you're paying for is not just a nice cash cow, but also someone that you can play on field um, even even more so because as we've seen, uh, the rookies, especially in the forward line, can't be relied upon. Um, Cadman's kind of the exception when he played the Eagles. So it's kind of matchup based. Um, whereas week to week, we'd love to have those rookies like we have in the midfield that are more consistent. And Dempsey is definitely, I think, one of those. And like Powell, this is probably your last chance to get on if you are looking to jump on one of the hottest cash cows in Dempsey who could make another 100K plus in three to four weeks, if not more. Do it. Do it. I've already got him. Um, I've loved having him in. I started him, which was nice. One of the only good moves I think I've made this year. Um, (laughs) It was was a very um, good move. But he... Yeah, I like what I'm seeing. I only saw, I have to be honest, I only saw probably the last quarter of the Hawks-Cats game. Um, but seeing him up on the wing and also getting back, like there was, I think, one stage where he got back and spoiled the ball for a behind. Um, mm. So that really is getting that sort of that wing role yeah. um, in there. So, I mean, it's just gonna it's going to help his scoring. Um, but it's nice to see his book ended, that with the 96, the 59 was what probably mm. what I would have expected more so. But the fact that he's also scored that 86, that's really positive. Um, and if he can do keep that sort of high 70s, average sort of going or a high 70s average that would be ideal um and he'll make plenty of cash but also be reliable as you said reliable on field which is nice get him in if you this is the last week though this is the week you have to do yeah. it if you haven't got him this is there's no point you can't wait um and that'll be it so the next guy is another 
potential rookie option that you could consider, and it is Harvey Thomas, mid-forward el eligible, break-even of minus 52. He returns from the bye, and despite a slow start with a score of 40 and 45 in his first two games, he really kick-started his cash gen with a score of 107 in his third game. That saw him increase his price by 57.7K to sit at 175K, but according to Supercoach Plus, if he can score at least 51 in his next two games, he will increase a further 84K in the next two weeks. Probably a bit lower down for me. Um, yeah. We've got some bubble boys that we're going to talk about in the next part. Um, but if you've got everyone, he is one that you could consider. Agreed there. Well, let's move on to those guys on the bubble. And uh, we start with the hottest ticket, um, I think, mm. uh, for this week uh, when it comes to rookies. It is Sam Darcy, 123.9K as a forward and has a break-even of negative 92. And while he was simply elite in his first match for season 2024, he didn't make as big a splash in game two, scoring just 54 from 11 disposals, one goal, and 27 rock contests as backup to Team English. The bonus is he has had 39% and 36% rock time across his first two games, with extra hitouts to advantage, of course, points um, that just, you know, a very, very bonus um that you just lap up. And the question mm. will be whether he is bev owed with Rory Lobb lurking in the background, ready to take his spot, especially considering that Lobb, I think, kicked, what, five goals in the VFL, playing as a ruck forward. Wait to see, of course, the team sheets because we just can't trust Bevo. We, we've heard all about it. We've spoken about him enough in this episode alone um, before pulling the trigger. But he should be able to make decent cash if he maintains his spot in the side. Yeah, Lobb's my biggest concern. I think he's kicked, he kicked five on the weekend, and I think he's kicked nine in the last two weeks in the VFL. Uh, like, shit, though. He's a classic VFL uh, player. Don't fall for it, Bevo. Yeah, no. The issue isn't Lobb. The issue is fucking Bevo. Yeah. Yeah. He, he can't I, be trusted. No. <laughs> But I think this is it. Like, this is, I mean, I don't know how many years. Darcy was the same year as Daycost, wasn't he? In terms uh, of draft, I think so. Yeah. Um. So, like, is you need to start playing him. Like, you need to start getting consistent games. I know he's tall, so it's obviously going to take him longer to develop. But I feel like now's the time, just yeah. purely for my own selfish desire. Yeah, but like, give him to play. Give Give the bloke a go. Like, he would be an yeah. absolute world beater in another team. Like, he'd probably be outright number one ruck. Um, at a you know, say like a West Coast. Um, or the well, like yeah, and, certainly. and really yeah. would kill it. So, yeah, it's just, it's annoying as a non Western Bulldogs fan. Um, taking pick two back in 2021. So it was in the Horn Francis draft. So the pick after yeah, okay. Horn Francis, big raps on him. GWS put a bit on him. And yeah, just play him, Bevo. Give him an extended run. Like, otherwise, just might as well trade him. Just, yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Yes. You know. Simply put, Next up, we do have Josh Draper, 123.9K, pickable as a defender with a break-even of a minus 32. A potential saviour, that is correct, in our defensive line. Draper scored 68 against the Crows after a 35 on debut. His 35 most certainly doesn't scream cash-making potential, but he does have solid job security given the defensive woes that Freo have. But that 68 was much more juicy. Should provide handy cover and may... Not be a slower burn as we first thought with that score of 68 kicking his cash gen along. We'll be in it for a tough day at the office though this week facing the Blues and having to potentially line up on Harry Mackay or Charlie Kerno. Yep. Surely he lines up on Mackay. Surely they don't. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> what, do, what do we know? We probably know more <laughs> than Bevo. Let's just put it. Let's just say that in terms yeah. of uh, trade in percentages here, I think he's. It should be one of the most. Should be one of the most, yeah. Um, I've got filters on here that I'm having a look at. Uh, so he is uh, the second most traded in at uh, 6.2% of teams. So, mm. um, yeah, and for good reason. As you said, good job security, very, very solid job security. So uh, that's kind of what, what we're hoping for. And injury-free, please, Supercoach Reaper, take a holiday, mate. Get, get get out of Australia. Get out of wherever dimension you're in. Just piss off for the time being and give these – defensive rookies a bit of a go, a bit of a crack because we need let some them, in our teams. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let them let them let them be. Yeah, let them be. Let them prosper. Another guy that's uh 
the Supercoach Reaper should be leaving alone, is another prospect in defense in Tom Brown. And no, it's not that Tom Brown, not T. Dollar Brown. <laughs> Uh, that we're so used to um, reading the ridiculous tweets from. Uh, it sitting, is Tom Brown from Richmond. Sitting in the in the dumpster, <laughs> just thinking you can look it out. Uh, and writing stories about um, fights outside of kebab shops and then analysing, over-analysing what was in a kebab. Pretty sure it was mixed. Had tomato. I mean, look, it's the kind of information that I do want. I want flavour in, yeah. in my room in my <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a bit of flair. I, I love that. That that sort of it. It's a bit of um. It's a bit of creative writing. It's not just factual writing. It's creative writing. Yeah. Um, not that it really adds anything to the story, but um. Yeah. No. I mean. But, yeah, we miss that nepo baby. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. Anyway, no, it's not that Tom Brown. It is uh the 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 yeah. normal, the the <laughs> non. <laughs> it is the normal. The better Tom Brown. <laughs> The one that hasn't got a lick of the tism. Uh, he's got a break even of negative 35, does Tom Brown. 154.2K is priced at. And the Richmond backman, he looks to have locked his spot away in the side. Having taken over from Gipkis over his last two games this season, he's gone at 78.3% disposal efficiency and a 1.9 kick to handball ratio while averaging a 6.5 intercept. Um, possessions and this will all help him score well with scores of 63 and 60 and uh, that um, should mean that he should make some decent cash uh, mm. provided that he does continue this uh, I guess nice little average that he's got going don't mind it don't mind it drop security tick super yep. reaper though Lock, locking Ooh. in apparently he's, he's <laughs> next in his sights he's next in his sights he's in his crosshairs oh <laughs> gee whiz it's like every episode now. It's kind of like the 69, ding, ding. It's kind yeah. of like, oh, well, at least can we get episode, we're going to be talking. Talk. <laughs> can we get through an episode without a defensive rookie going down? <laughs> exactly. Uh, maybe we can have both. Maybe we have a 69. Uh, which one will last longer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Which which trend will continue? Hey. <laughs> anyway. Now, we've, of course, heading into our next segment, Liam, we've made the yes. call out to our viewers and listeners to send in their own rendition of I'm the captain now. And we have had an influx of people send in their rendition. And the latest comes from probably one of our youngest fans in Ollie, which was sent in by his dad, Travis Ross. Take it away for us, Ollie. Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> oh yes, very very cute. I did enjoy oh, that, and I love, it. I love the execution. Just it, it's uh, bang on, and mm. uh, he's probably trumped Adam. I think Adam was probably our um, well, he's, he's been the only one really so far, hasn't he? Uh, he's <laughs> he was top of the tree. Now he's fallen down a bit. I think I'm sorry, Adam, but you've been trumped by Ollie, and it's gonna it's gonna take some trumping, I reckon. Not yeah, Donald, can, not the yeah. Donald variety. It's just gonna be. Um, Trying to knock knock Ollie off his perch. I think it, I don't think it's going to happen uh, anytime no. soon. But we've got a, a few in the bank, of course. So um, nonetheless, if you do want to send in your own rendition, of please do the captain now. Please do one hundred percent. Do it via uh, slot into our DMs on Facebook. Um, you can send a recording via that. You can email us a, AFL Supercoach Edge at gmail.com. Yes. Did I get that right? Nailed it. Nailed it. I don't know. I was going to say, is there a 69 in there somewhere? Should have been. Oh, hey, Supercoach Edge 69 at gmail.com. See, any way um, you can have a Gmail, isn't it? No, it would have to be a Hotmail. It actually, to be yeah. a Hotmail. It has, to, it has to be a Hotmail. We all have one of those. <laughs> Did we ever? Maybe it was just me. But thank you, Ollie, uh, so much for sending that in. Uh, and likewise, uh, your dad, at Travis. Uh, I, when I when I watch that, because it is uh, in video form, of course, for those tuning into YouTube, you can see this. Uh, for those people tuning in via the audio podcast, jump across and have a look uh, because he, he just puts his, his full gusto into it. So uh, tip it. of the cap to you. Sorry, wrong cap. Tip of the cap to you, Ollie. Arr. I don't know why I'm a pirate all of a sudden because I'm a captain. But I am the captain now because I was a pirate. So it does make sense. But anyway. Anyway. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> What is I'm the Let's captain now, Let's some options. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> what is it? No one knows what it is. In I'm the captain now, we chat through the VCNC options that you've got for the upcoming round of Supercoach. We scrounge through the data 
and we find our options for you to consider. I've gone a bit more than top three, um, but we also have our <laughs> own best ahead, which we run through as well. So mm. I think I just got a bit excited because it's a, a best of not, not best 18. It's a full complement of players. No, yeah. no games missing. So we'll kick off with the first one and it is Max Gorn because we don't know. He's going to be Ooh. Maximilian. He's going to be yes. Maxwell or is he going to be straight up Maxi? Uh, playing on the Thursday night, he is a perfect VC option, averaging 131 for the season with three tons and two scores of 160 plus. Also, historically has a great average against the Crows with scores of 131, 120 and 100 for an average of 114.7. So consider him if you have him as your VC. Yep. I do like good old Maxi Gorn. Uh, also like the look of this man here, Isaac mm. Heaney. Can you look past the Heen Dog? So he is averaging 139 for the season so far and has an average against the Eagles, of course, who he faces this week, of 114 in his last three against them for scores of 150, 112, and an 80. It looks as though he's on the upward trend there. Of course, the 150 being his most recent. Um, 170 incoming. Yep. Yes, exactly. That's our, um, what was it? Power suggestion. Yeah, that's it. That's when I'm doing 170. Him. I really don't want him to do that. I really want him to score about 50, but. Yeah. No, thank you, Liam. You've already, you've said it. You've said it. I'm going to ride it to the moon. <laughs> All right. Next up, it is, maybe that's the thing. Maybe if you don't have the player, you can, you can suggest what team, what they're going to score. Yeah. Maybe that's how it works. Maybe that's okay. how the power suggestion I'll do a works. suggestion for you for Tim English. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> he scores zero. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, he gets stopped on zero. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just Bevo starts him and then <laughs> immediately subs him off. Yeah, as soon as he Daniel. does. As soon as when he's when he's uh, when he's jumping in the air for the first yeah. rock hit out, and then Bevo just calls out, "Nut, nut, nut! Stop your <laughs> stop your rock hit out, mate! You're off." <laughs> Kevin Daniel in the rock. Um, <laughs> Tim English happen. will potentially be facing against a virtual rookie in Toby Conway. Mammoth score could be on the way. Has an average of 127 for the season so far, an average of 113 against the Cats in his last three for scores of 124, 146, and 130, 113. So definitely watch who the matchup is in the ruck because that could be an absolutely bonkers score for the big English breakfast. Yep, 100%. He's uh, got a bit of a nice run at the moment. It kind of reminds me a bit of um, a bit of Witsy from last Witsy, year. Witsy, yes. Yep. Was it the year before? I don't know. They all blended to one. Um, yeah. Next up, we have his teammate in Lebont. Uh, is Lebont Le El Capitano? Well, he has a se season average of 124 so far. Just with two of his... that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember we do that? People send in their editions of Is Lebont El Capitano? <laughs> so he does have a season average of 124 so far, with two of his three scores being captaincy worthy, of course, above 125. And he likely got bevoed on the weekend, as we spoke about, due to his um, due to the matchup against the uh, hapless Eagles. But his recent history against the Cats means he should score well: 146, 113, 109 for an average of 122.7. So it could mm. be an El Capitano. Could be an El Capitano. Uh, another option for you is Tom Stewart. Now, he has been in a rich run of form with a score of 99, 135, and 105 to start the season. He also uh, faces the Bulldogs, who he averages 121 against with scores of 124, 127, and 112. We have discounted an injury affected score in there of, I think it was about 30. Um, so he's averaging 121 against the Doggies. Yep, I don't mind it. Um, next up, we have the Green Machine, the Hulk himself, mm -hmm. Tom Green, potentially one of the picks of the bunch here, obviously, wow. as the C, with scores of 132, 152, and a 137 to start the season for an average of 140.3, but has played the Suns just twice for a score of 147 and 92. So hard to look really at, at historical form here, uh, as opposed to, of course, his most recent form, but I think will be a very popular C option if our VCs fail to fire again in round four. Don't mind it. Yep, agreed. Tasty. Nick Dacos up against Hawthorne. It could be a bit more of a torch cautionary tale here. While he has had some big scores in 2024 with scores of 131 and 135, he has also been sputting it up 
with scores of 54. And I'm even going to say that his 112 on the weekend was a bit of a spud score. Um, mm, it was. Doesn't have the best average against the Hawks either. Obviously was subbed out in the last game uh, for a 41 in with an injury. Um, but the spectre of McGuinness does await. Does he get tagged? Uh, or maybe they just so, they identify mm, the die. Oh, he's in poor form. Try and just let him go. No, we will not let you go. Let him go. What about if they play Ginevan on Dacos? If Dacos is in defense, Ooh. it'd be interesting. And then Ginevan can be like throwing the arm up again, and then Pi supporters can just go bananas. Mm. He's, I do he's love... some free kicks, so that's going to be funny, isn't it, if he gets paid well, some free kicks? The AFL came out today and said that they were, you know, they he missed out on free kicks. And mm. the Pies on Twitter supporters are all saying, of course, it's this week. He's going to get all these frees. And I'm like, hmm. Well, he's me. What about, what about the frees that he got in 2020, what, two years ago that they were quite happy for him to get? Yeah, exactly um, right. Yeah, Doing the same uh, thing. But anyway. And the shoe's on the other foot. I see the uh, the turn tables. <laughs> the tables have turned. Well, uh, let's round it out with a bit of a sneaky pot option here that you've written down, Liam, and uh, mm. I don't mind it at all. It is the big H, Harry Mackay, who, who is averaging 126.3 in 2024 with scores of 137, 112, and 130. And the last time that he played the Dockers, he managed a score of 118. So there is potential for him to go big, especially with Frio's depleted back line. A risk but could be a nice one for a bit of a pod VC, which I don't mind, obviously. Um, take a risk with the VC. And uh, if it pays off, then um, especially with Harry Mackay only in, what, 4% mm. of teams, um, you're going to be well off uh, if he goes absolutely bananas. Yep, agreed. Very, very good. Well, Liam, that leads us on to our captaincy head-to-head tips. And you managed to uh, peg back a win here uh, with your choice, of course, of yes. English. Yes, scoring 124 over my choice of Lebont, who got bevoed. So I'm going to blame Bevo for this because I only fell short by 14 points. Um, albeit, how was it? It was funny as well because uh, we, of course, were at uh, at lunch for uh, yes. Easter Sunday and uh, we'll check in with the scores. And Lebont was having a le shit one and, of course, being bevoed. And then Nick Minute scored a couple of quick goals towards the back end. And then... Mind you, of course, Pistol Pete, who no doubt will be uh, tuning in, our uh, collective father-in-law, he uh, he's like, oh, he finished in 108. He's like, what's the bet that he gets? He gets uh, scaled up, a a and laughs. And then next minute, he, out of the blue, he's just like burst out laughing. And he's like, he's been scaled up too. <laughs> to 110. Uh, of course, we both had him captain. So um, that was a no, nice I had, Easter I Sunday had, treat. Yeah, I didn't. I had English as my captain. Yeah. No, you had English here, but Pete and I, we, you and we Pete, yeah, you and Pete. yeah, I know it was dirty on those extra two points. <laughs> Still got to the win though in our captain's Still got me so the win. Not did, all for did, nothing. Did. No, so we are sitting even uh, with the differential in your favour of ten points. So very, very mm. close. So I did use my actual captain as my under captain now pick, which was a nice little parallel. But you are first up this week, David, with the full complement of players to choose from. So who mm. have you got? Well, I feel like I'm cheating if I go for Green again. Like I know that uh, obviously no, because you can pick pass, him. You didn't pick him. But I did the previous week, oh. leading into his buy. No, so... that's, that's okay. No, nah, but I'm, I'm going to go different because I can feel it in not just in my heart, Liam, but in my loins for this man who has traditionally been a burn man. But this time oh. around, 2024. Oh, no, five. it's not that burn. Is no, it it's not five? that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it is not. I would not be seen dead with this man. Um, I am going to go for, because someone else mentioned as well, we should, uh, it was in the chat uh, of our um, Thursday team's live stream. And I mentioned how it was kind of the season that is kind of, of rekindle romances virtually, or like, mm. you know, Kissing and making up because, you know, apart from Fife, but the likes of Heaney especially, um, who's just – I probably wouldn't have been seen dead again with him, but I took the took the risk and, you know, we're at the all. town, we're, we're having um, candle candlelight dinners, all that sort of thing. So he's an absolute gun, and he's the man that I'm going to lock in as my captain, um, or at least in real life he's going to be my VC. Uh, 
And if he fails, I'm going to go into Tommy Green. But I like to live dangerously, Liam. So I'll leave him to you if you'd like to go for him. Um, and I'm going to stick with Isaac Newton, a.k.a. Heaney. I think I'm going to have to go Tom Green. There's no one else I really like. English is a risk. I don't mind English. But I think I'm going to go Tom Green. But I do like the Heaney pick against the Eagles. Very, yeah. very good pick there. Well, Liam, that does bring us to the end of the show. But before we go, where can our listeners and viewers find us across our socials? Yes, on YouTube, you can search Supercoach Edge and don't forget to like and subscribe. On Twitter, at Supercoach underscore Edge, at DamoJ88, or myself at, at Liam Evans. So Damon at, at DamoJ88, myself at, at Liam Evans underscore 95. I was just thinking, we haven't really had much Elon Musk humor lately. No, we really- haven't. We haven't spoken about him much, but um, not, not that we've had to, but uh, just. <laughs> well, we haven't had to because I noticed they did a story yesterday, I think it was last night, on 60 Minutes about uh, Teslas and their automated pilot um, auto oh, driving right. systems or the software that was failing and it was catastrophic failures and stuff and someone like was obliterated in their car and they were oh, doing wow. an expo. Yeah, they were doing an expose on uh, Musk pushing forward the release of like the Teslas because he got up at you know one of the um, technology expos or whatever, and was like, "Oh yeah, and someone's like, oh, when's it going to be ready? He's going to be ready by 2022." And you can see the gears ticking over in his mind. It probably would have been 2024 or something. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, 2022, no worries." And then like they were interviewing like software developers and stuff, and they said like how they had to put in little little measures to try and fast track things and cut corners and yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyway, uh, that's uh, Elon Musk for you. And um, that's- Thanks for the update. That's not yeah. positive. No, it's not at all. So it just adds to the uh, the villainous story. <laughs> you know what? He should change his name to, to Maximilian. To Maximilian. <laughs> Maximilian Musk. M.M. That is a good Bond villain name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> anyway, like let's let's move on. Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> uh, TikTok, uh, wherever else. Search Supercoach Edge. And if you do want to email us, AFL Supercoach mm. Edge at gmail.com. Don't hit us up at their hotmail. No, and no 69 included as well. Ding, ding. No. Oh. Um, but of course, make sure you check out our Team Talk review episodes. And don't forget also to jump into our free open league if you haven't done so already, with the league code being 123391. With, of course, the winner receiving a Supercoach Championship ring. From the good folk at Supercoach Championship Rigs. Yes. Well, that rounds us out for round three. Must say, of course, best of luck for round four. May your trades hit the mark and your scores head towards their moon. Catch you next week. All the best. See you guys.